I ask that you please be upstanding for the arrival of the flag party. His Honour, the Administrator of the Northern Territory, the Honourable John Hardy and Mrs Hardy, the Honourable Adam Giles, Chief Minister of the Northern Territory, Mrs Kimberly Furnish, Consul, United States of America, representing Consul General Ms Amy Hyatt, Mr Keith Shackley, Federal President of the Australian American Association, the Honourable Peter Stiles, accompanied by Ms Linda Fazeldine, Minister for Multicultural Affairs, the Honourable Peter Chandler, Minister for Veterans Affairs of the Northern Territory. Ms Delia Laurie, Leader of the Northern Territory Opposition. Ms Leah Finocchiaro, Member for Drysdale. Senator, the Honourable Nigel Scullion, Federal Minister for Indigenous Affairs and today representing the Chief, uh, the, sorry, the Prime Minister of Australia, accompanied by Ms Carol Sexton. Ms Natasha Griggs, Member for Solomon and today representing Senator the Honourable Michael Ronaldson, Federal Minister for Veterans Affairs. Senator Nova Paris, Senator for the Northern Territory, accompanied by Mr Jack Paris. The Right Worshipful, the Lord Mayor, Katrina Fong Lim, City of Darwin. His Worship, the Mayor, Mr Alderman Ian Abbott. Rear Admiral Ken Doolan, AO, retired, National President of the Returned Servicemen's League, accompanied by Mr Don Milford. President of the Darwin RSL, senior serving members of the Australian Defence Force and the US Marine Corps, together with members of the Northern Territory and Australian Federal Police Forces, members of the Diplomatic Corps, veterans, Territorians, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. My name is Donna Kwong and I'm your Master of Ceremonies for this morning. It's my honour to welcome you all here today to this commemorative service on the 73rd anniversary of the destruction of the US destroyer Peary, sunk on the 19th of February 1942 by Japanese carrier-based aircraft. Each year, the Australian American Association, with the assistance of the Australian Defence Force and the City of Darwin, hosts this brief service in memory of the fallen, of those who survived, and of the ongoing relationship that Darwin has with the United States of America, for which we will be forever grateful. Uh, I now would like to introduce to you and to the microphone for our official welcome, the President of the Australian American Association of the Northern Territory, Mr Rick Setter. Thank you, Donna. And thank you, Waldo. That was absolutely wonderful. First time I'd heard it earlier this morning, but uh, gee, that says everything, doesn't it? Thank you so much for coming down, Waldo. Your Honour, the Honourable John Hardy, Mrs Hardy, the Honourable Adam Giles, Chief Minister, Mrs Kimberly Furnish, Consul of the United States of America from Melbourne. Thanks you everybody for coming along here this morning. We're here this morning to celebrate, commemorate the sinking of the USS Peary. And when you look out at our beautiful harbour, it's hard to imagine the devastation that was inflicted on Darwin on that day, the 19th of February, 1942. This harbour, those ships, were attacked by the same uh, fleet of the Japanese Navy and the same aircraft that attacked Pearl Harbour on the 9th of December. So only 10 weeks later, they arrived here. Let me tell you something about the Peary. Uh, she was a 20-year-old ship, and at the time that the Second World War broke out, she was stationed in the Philippines. In fact, she was at, in a place called Cavite Bay. And... Um, the Japanese attacked 
three days after war broke out and she was uh, she suffered um, several bomb hits and she lost eight of her personnel and the captain uh, whose name is uh, commander HH H. Keith uh, he was wounded as well and he was uh, had to be replaced by Captain John Birmingham shortly after on the 26th of December she was again attacked and on the 28th she was ordered to uh, leave the Philippines and travel down here to Darwin. She did that and when she was uh, travelling through the uh, Macassar Strait between the islands of in those days Borneo and Celebes uh, and now uh, Bapak Sirigar, uh, Kalimantan and uh, Sulawesi and she came under attack again twice once by Allied planes fortunately they missed and the next day by Japanese aircraft and fortunately she wasn't damaged. She continued on and arrived here into Darwin Harbour and soon after she arrived here she was uh, uh, together with the USS Houston she was assigned to accompany a convoy taking troops to Timor and of course they left here on I think it was early on the uh, the 18th and they traveled off towards Timor they didn't go very far and they were attacked by Japanese bombers and that indicates of course that that whole coastline was being being covered by the Japanese Navy so they were attacked and they immediately returned back into Darwin Harbor they arrived into Darwin Harbor later that night and um, the two ships refuelled and left again, the Euston and the Peary, and they were heading for the Java Sea. Not long after leaving Darwin Harbour, the Peary identified a Japanese submarine and she gave chase. The Euston sailed on and, and uh, it's a bit sad because three weeks later the Euston also went to the bottom in the, in the Sunda Strait uh, in the Battle of the Java Sea. But the Peary turned around, came back to Darwin to refuel because she'd used a lot of fuel uh, chasing the submarine. She arrived back in here at 1am on the morning of the 19th. 1am on the nor morning of the 19th and she was anchored up there uh, close to Stokes Hill Wharf. Well of course as we all know at 9.58 the bombing commenced. The Peary immediately raised her anchor and started heading for the open ocean because it gave her more manoeuvrability. Almost immediately she was hit by one bomb. She continued to fire her guns as she came down the harbour and within minutes she was hit by four other bombs. And of course that was the death knell for her. And by the time she arrived out here, somewhere near where that uh, ship is passing down there now, she went to the bottom. And she went to the bottom with a loss of 92 lives. And unfortunately, her new captain, John Birmingham, uh, he perished with the Peary, Peary and those 92 souls. So we think it's very, very important that the sacrifice of the USS Peary and her crew are recognised annually at this place because you see here, this is a gun from the USS Peary, which Carl Atkinson a local diver raised off the Peary in the 1950s. And uh, those of you who have been to the fish feeding just down behind us here at Doctor's Gully will remember that this gun lay at the side of the road there for like 20 years until in 1992 the Northern Territory Government uh, Chief Minister at the time, Marshal Perrin, Sam Calder was our president. The two of them got together and agreed that uh, this gun could be retrieved, renewed and mounted here and with great assistance from the uh, Royal Australian Navy who cleaned it up and painted it and assisted uh, it was mounted here and the official opening was in 1992 and ever since then we've held this ceremony to commemorate the Peary. Thank you and I hope you enjoyed this morning's ceremony. Today we're very honoured to have with us in Darwin, Miss Kimberly Furnish, Consul of the United States of America. Please, we invite her now to welcome her to Darwin and to our ceremony.
Good morning. His Honor, the Honorable John Hardy, Administrator of the Northern Territory, the Honorable Adam Giles, Chief Administrator of the Nor Northern Territory, the Right Worshipful, Worshipful Lord Mayor D of Darwin, C Katrina Fong Lim, Rep representatives of federal, territory, and local governments, members of the Consular Corps, members of the Armed Forces, veterans, honored guests, and members of the Australian American Association, and especially to Rick Setter, the, the president of the AAA. Thank you so much for bringing me here today. And thanks to all of you. Um, I'm a girl from Louisiana, so I'd like to thank you for turning on the, the real Darwin weather for me today. I feel right at home, so thanks y'all for that. <laughs> And I thank you for the privilege of allowing me to join you in honoring the brave souls who tragically perished on this, the 73rd anniversary of the bombing of Darwin. What happened here will not be forgotten. And really, it changed the course of history between our two nations. When the crew of the USS Peary woke up that morning of February 19, they had no idea what would befall, befall them that day. Despite their shock and horror, their great discipline, and most importantly, their insurmountable courage held them at their post steady, steadfast, determined. Despite the hail of bullets and the bombs raining on their heads, with the shriek of metal and wounded men all around them, and even while the USS Peary plummeted into, into the ocean's depths, the men aboard refused. They refused to stop firing. And as the sinking ship was engulfed in flames, the Peary's gunners kept firing until the last plane flew away. Many of these men were barely 19 years old. 19 years old. I can remember what I was doing at 19, and I was certainly not that brave. I'm honored by their courage. I'm honored by their bravery. They had maturity and wisdom beyond their 19 years. This was an event that marked this nation's soul and our nation's soul, and will certainly not soon be forgotten. Americans and Australians lost their lives in this very harbor. They fought shoulder to shoulder like brothers, and American and Australian soldiers have served together in every major conflict since World War II. And while the very nature of security and international peace in our world is questioned every single day, Australia and America remained friends, remained brothers in arm and friends, mates. And for that, I am truly, truly grateful. I look at our close relationship, I look at this safe and still harbor, and I think that this is a real tribute to those who perished on February 19, 1942. Free, strong, hopeful, and brave. On behalf of the United States of America, I thank you, Australia. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your support. Thank you to the AAA. Thank you, people of Darwin. Thank you for remembering these brave souls who lost their lives that day. Lest we forget, thank you. Our ceremony will now continue with prayers by the chaplain to be followed by the wreath laying ceremony. During the period of the wreath laying ceremony and our minute of remembrance, we ask not only that you remember the brave souls that perished or those that went on to survive and bring their courage and stories and memories and tribute to the world, but also those who survived, those who remained in Darwin to rebuild and those who took from that courage and strength the decision to move on into the future with grace, with humbleness, and with gratitude. I invite now to the stage uh, Chaplain uh, to lead us in prayers. Chaplain Quattro. Shall we bow together in prayer? Lord God, we gather today to continue to remember the sacrifices of the past. It is one thing to remember those who have given their lives in service of the defence of their country. It is an even greater thing to remember those whose sacrifice was to support and defend their allies and friends across the seas. As we look out today on this beautiful harbour, we remember the 92 crew of USS Peary, whose watery grave represents the US Navy's greatest loss of life in Australian waters. We continue to grieve the folly and loss of war. We continue to uphold the traditions of defence and renew the strengths of the bonds of allies. We pray for the new group of Marines soon to arrive in the Northern Territory. May their service continue to reflect the finest traditions of the United States of America. May our welcome and support reflect the continuing importance we place 
on the US-Australian alliance. In death, Lord God, you continue to be our hope, our strength and our consolation. May we know your grace and may we rest in peace. Amen. His Honour the Honourable John Hardy, Administrator of the Northern Territory. The Honourable Adam Giles, Chief Minister of the Northern Territory. Mrs. Kim Furnish, Consul United States of America, and Colonel Matthew Puglisi, US Marines Rotational Force. Mr. Keith Shackley, Federal President, and Mr. Rick Setter, President, Northern Territory of the Australian American Association. The Honourable Peter Stiles, Minister for Multicultural Affairs. The Honourable Peter Chandler, Minister for Veterans Affairs, Northern Territory. Member for Drysdale, Ms. Leah Finocchiaro. Ms. Delia Laurie, Leader of the Opposition, Northern Territory. Representing the Prime Minister of Australia, Mr Tony Abbott, Senator the Honourable Nigel Scullion, Federal Minister for Indigenous Affairs. Also, Ms Natasha Griggs, Member for Solomon, today representing the Honourable Michael Ronaldson, Minister for Veterans Affairs. Senator for the Northern Territory, Senator Nova Paris, accompanied by Mr Jack Paris. The Right Worshipful Lord Mayor Katrina Fong Lim, City of Darwin, and Mayor Ian Abbott, City of Palmerston. Commodore Brenton Smythe, Commander Norcom. Commander John Navin, Commander HMS Coonawarra, together with Lieutenant Colonel Darrell Bridgman, representing Brigadier Ryan, Commander First Brigade, and Wing Commander Wesley Perrett, Commanding Officer, 13 Squadron, Royal Australian Air Force. Acting Commissioner of Police, Rhys Kershaw, Northern Territory Police. Rear Admiral Ken Doolan, retired, National President, Returned Servicemen's League, together with Mr Don Milford, President of the Darwin RSL. Consul for the Republic of Indonesia, Bapak Andre Sirigar, of the Honorary Consul General for Greece, Mr John Anik Demartis, and the Honorary Consul General for the Republic of the Philippines, Mr John Rivas. Deputy Commissioner of the Northern Territory Department of Veterans Affairs, Ms. Leanne Cameron, Mr. Lorenzo Strano, Director of the Northern Territory Department of Foreign Affairs, and Mr. Filippo Mirci, Operations Manager, Conico Phillips. I now invite any members of the public, veterans or persons here today, who wish to lay tribute at the memorial to come forward.
you now please be upstanding for the recitation of the Ode of Remembrance by Warrant Officer Class 1, Jeff Carter, CSM Retired. Following which, the bugler will sound last post, the minute silence, and which will be broken by Rouse. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. lest we forget. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please remain standing for the benediction. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. A very brief thank you to the City of Darwin, to the Northern Territory Defence Force, to the members of the US Marines Rotational Force who have joined us today, to the many friends of the Australian American Association, the members who organised this and all functions, to each of you who have come today. I'd also like to invite those who have come previously and have laid tributes to make contact with one of the members of the Australian American Association so that next year we can be sure we extend you invitations and make sure that we can acknowledge your contribution to our day. Please remain standing now as the flag party dismounts. Yeah.